Imagine a car that drove for 10 years straight, without a single pit stop, without ever turning its engine off. What would happen to it? Could any machine, no matter how advanced, survive such an unimaginable ordeal? For the past decade, a secret experiment has been running hidden from the public eye. A single vehicle, known only as the Maxwell Mobile, has been on a perpetual journey. Its mission was simple, yet audacious, to drive, uninterrupted, for an entire decade. The man behind this revolutionary machine is Maxwell Chikambutso. He claimed his technology could defy our very understanding of energy and motion. Skeptics called it impossible, a fantasy that broke the fundamental laws of physics. So, we decided to put it to the ultimate test, one of unprecedented scale and duration. We built a secure, private, and climate-controlled track, a circular prison of asphalt. The car was placed inside, its path an endless loop. The rules were absolute. No stopping, no refueling in the conventional sense, no human intervention unless absolutely critical. The only thing powering this vehicle was its own revolutionary system, said to harness ambient radio frequency waves. On a day no different from any other, the engine, or rather, its unique power generator, was activated. The wheels began to turn. And they simply never stopped. Maxwell himself, along with a small, dedicated team of monitors, vanished from the public spotlight. Their existence became the experiment, a silent vigil over a machine on a marathon no one knew was happening. High-resolution cameras and a vast array of sensors recorded every vibration, every sound, every fluctuation in power. Data streams flowed into banks of servers, painting a digital portrait of endurance. The first few months were a novelty. The car, a sleek and futuristic prototype, hummed along its predetermined path with a quiet determination. It seemed to scoff at the idea of fatigue. The team watched, expecting a dramatic failure at any moment. But none came. The seasons changed outside the facility walls, but inside, the environment remained perfectly controlled. The only thing that changed was the accumulating distance on the digital odometer. One year bled into two. Two into five. The initial novelty was replaced by a grinding, monotonous reality. The driver, a sophisticated autopilot system, required occasional software updates, beamed in wirelessly. The tires, specially designed for this test, wore down at an astonishingly slow rate, but even they needed to be replaced remotely by automated machinery after the first three years. It was a delicate ballet of minimal intervention, ensuring the uninterrupted spirit of the test was maintained. There were moments of heart-stopping tension. In year four, a massive power surge from a local storm tripped the facility's primary electrical grid. The backup generators roared to life within seconds, but for a terrifying moment, the monitors went dark. The team held their breath, fearing the car's system would reset, that the decade-long run would end in a silent, powerless coast. But when the screens flickered back to life, the car was still moving, its internal power source seemingly unfazed by the external chaos. Another time, in year seven, a critical sensor on the braking system failed. A small, robotic arm, pre-programmed for such contingencies, extended from a pit in the track. With inhuman precision, it swapped the faulty component in a matter of minutes, all while the car continued its endless lap. These were the only real interruptions in a decade of motion. The core technology, the RF energy converter and its proprietary motor, never faltered. It simply worked, day after day, month after month, year after year. The sound of its operation became a constant, a heartbeat in the sterile environment of the test track. Then, the day finally arrived. Ten full years after it began, the secret was to be unveiled. A selected group of the world's top automotive engineers and physicists were invited to the facility. They had no idea what they were about to witness. They were led into the control room, where live feeds showed the car still circulating the track. A clock on the wall displayed the stunning statistic. Ten years, zero days, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, operation continuous. The head of the project, his own hair now grayer, gave a silent nod. A technician sent a command. For the first time in a decade, the command to cease propulsion was issued. The car, its momentum still carrying it forward, 
began to slow. It didn't screech or shudder. It glided to a gentle, almost serene halt in the exact spot it had started from ten years prior. The silence that followed was deafening, broken only by the hum of the servers. The odometer was frozen at a number that defied belief. The car had covered a distance equivalent to driving around the Earth's equator over 150 times. The invited experts stood in stunned silence, their minds struggling to process the data on the screens. Then the inspection began. They approached the vehicle, now christened the Maxwell Mobile, with a sense of reverence and disbelief. Externally, the car was not pristine. It was coated in a fine layer of dust that had settled over the years, a patina of its incredible journey. The windshield was peppered with microscopic pits from a decade of encountering air particles, but it was perfectly clear. There were no dents, no scratches, no signs of a major impact. It looked tired but not broken. The doors were opened. The interior smelled only of clean, recycled air. The seats, made from an advanced endurance material, showed almost no visible wear. The steering wheel, never touched by human hands, was like new. The dashboard lights were all off. The car had simply gone to sleep. The first major shock came from the power source. There was no fuel tank to inspect, no massive battery pack to analyze. The system's internal diagnostics reported its energy reservoir was still at 48% capacity. It had not been refueled, recharged, or replenished in any way for 10 years. The engineers scrambled, checking and rechecking the data logs. The energy input from ambient radio frequencies, while small, had been constant and the system's efficiency at converting it was, as Maxwell had always claimed, revolutionary. The deep dive into the car's anatomy began. The engine, or more accurately, the electromagnetic propulsion unit, was opened. The components inside showed minimal thermal wear. There was no carbon buildup, no warping from extreme heat cycles. It was as if it had been running for a few days, not a decade. The transmission system, a direct drive unit with very few moving parts, was in a similar state. The brakes, despite their use in regulating speed on the track, had worn less than 20%. The tires, on their fifth set, were the only components that had required significant replacement. The electronics, the nervous system of the vehicle, were subjected to the most intense scrutiny. Every circuit board, every chip, every line of code was analyzed. The consensus was that the system stability and the lack of on-off cycles, the thermal stress that typically kills electronics, were key to their survival. The car had never been cold. It had existed in a state of perpetual, optimal operation. When compared to a standard 10-year-old car with average mileage, the differences were not just dramatic, they were from different realities. A conventional engine would have been a seized, worthless block of metal. A transmission would have been a soup of shredded gears. This vehicle was, for all intents and purposes, still drivable. The lessons for future automotive design were profound. The test revealed that durability is not just about stronger materials, but about smarter systems. Eliminating the violent cycles of heating and cooling, of starting and stopping, could exponentially increase the life of every component. The efficiency of the RF power system pointed towards a future where vehicles could be truly energy independent, drawing power from the environment itself. The human element of this story cannot be overlooked. Maxwell Chikambutso's vision, once mocked, had been validated in the most extreme way imaginable. His commitment to seeing the test through to the end represented a monumental feat of human perseverance. It was a story of belief in an idea, even when the entire world doubts you. This decade-long secret test does more than just showcase a single invention. It forces us to ask new, bigger questions. What does this mean for the future of transportation? If a car can run for 10 years without fuel, what does that mean for global energy policies? If its components can last this long, what does that mean for sustainability and waste? The Maxwell Mobile is no longer just a car. It is a benchmark. It is a promise of a future where limits are made to be broken. The test is over. But the journey for this technology is just beginning. And the next challenge, whatever it may be, will build upon the astonishing truth revealed in this secret, decade-long drive.